Hello and welcome to Yoga with Michelle. I'm Michelle. Today I have another special guest, my friend Laura Gould. Laura and I have been friends since college. We were roommates for four years, right? Mm, three. Yellow House and then Brown Avenue. Oh, that's true. You kind of lived a little bit with us in Chattanooga. That's true. So I'll just say four years. Okay. Um, and we've shared in many major life moments. Laura is the spiritual care director at St. Anne of Winona, a musician, wife, and mother to three beautiful children and a fantastic cook, which is why she's here. She, <laughs> I know. <laughs> she is an ENFP and an Enneagram 7. Her zest for life and love of cooking has allowed her to create a home where her children are fearless and they eat whole natural foods basically made from scratch sometimes <laughs> which we'll we'll get uh, into. most of the time most of the time um, well i visited laura last year and she made some amazing fresh dis dishes such as quiche and pizza made from scratch that seemed to be effortless and it definitely encouraged me to do the same um, and definitely full of love and i am an enfj which is probably why I love you so much. Ah. And we get along so well. So <laughs> my first question is, which by the way, this might be a little giggly. We've already decided. <laughs> uh, where does your passion for cooking and baking come from? I think that it's just from my family growing up. I mean, my sister's a pastry chef teacher. Um, my mom you know, she was real, she was a good cook. My, both of my grandmas were good cooks. Um, and all of us, like my siblings and I, we all just love to cook. We love to eat. We love to talk about food. Um, so I just think it's kind of just family of origin is why. <laughs> that makes sense. It's funny. Yeah. When I met Jesse, he told me, he's like, you and your family talk about food a lot. I'm yeah. like, because that's yeah. what we do. We travel, like, we eat one meal, and we plan for the next meal. Exactly. That's what we do, too. <laughs> like, we're on vacation. Let's just talk about what we're going to eat. I know. <laughs> you got to map it out when you go to Disney, which places you're going to eat at. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I guess the next question is yeah. kind of what you already touched on. So your inspiration for cooking would probably be, like, your mom, your grandma, your family. Yeah, and, you know, we just kind of, like, feed off of each other. And then, you know, as I moved out, moved away, had different roommates. I would learn different things from them. Like my, I had a roommate that was from Texas, Cassie. That's how I learned to make the best guacamole. It was from her. And then from you, I learned different things that you could do with vegetables. So I add the meat too, but like, <laughs> you know, and I don't know, you just pick up as you go. It's always just been a real interest. So I like watching the Food Network and just talking and learning about food. That's awesome. On a side note, yeah. did you get my text about the video, the new Netflix show? I don't know. It's Nadia. She is from the Great British Bake Off and okay. her cooking, it sounds kind of like what we're going to be talking about today where it's like sort of from scratch, sort of for ease because she's also has three children. Okay. But yeah. So some of the recipes, it's like, these are just shortcuts you can make. Like, if you don't want to make your own puff pastry, no harm in buying it yeah. from the grocery store. Well, the Barefoot Contessa says that on her show, like, about certain things. Like, if you can't make this homemade, it's okay to buy it at the store. You make sure. Right. So. You feel like, so there's this pressure, right? So as a mom, to be, like, the best mom, there's a lot of mom shaming. Do you mm -hmm. feel there's a little bit of that with cooking as well? Maybe, I well, I think with like just making sure I'm, I'm feeding my kids well, like I, we don't do quinoa, like I'm not super crunchy in the food I make, um, and so when the girls show up with packed lunch with like fruit and a peanut butter sandwich, and then I see another kid that has like quinoa salad, I'm like, oh, maybe... We're not healthy <laughs> but I, I still think we pack them healthy lunches yeah. and cook them healthy food and for four-year-olds they have a pretty wide palate 
Now Ivy um, struggled to eat her salad tonight, but she did eat it. <laughs> well, I just remember when I was there visiting and you, like you had made this delicious homemade meal and it was like all these vegetables and sides and they didn't want to finish it. And you're mm -hmm. like, okay, it's there if you get hungry. And then five minutes later, it's like, I'm hungry. And you're like, all right, there's your food right there. <laughs> yeah. you left it. It's yeah. there for you to eat. Yeah. And, um, so you just give them stuff. So where do most of your recipes come from? Oh, all the like, all, many places. I don't know. Like the food I make is just a conglomeration of all the, of my family and then the places I've been, the places I've lived, people I know, like just think, cause it, you know, because it's um, an interest for me, it's just, I gather it. I gather recipes, I gather techniques um, from different places. I like to buy, I actually have a stack of cookbooks sitting here because I was <laughs> propping up the thing, but like I actually made this for my family. And it has just like family recipes and then stuff Nicole and I and um, Jason, my brother, Nicole's my sister, have gathered over the years. Um, I go online. I really, really like um, <laughs> Reed Drummond's recipes, the Pioneer Woman, and I like Barefoot Contessa a lot. And what I um, discovered last summer when I was crazy pregnant and then had the baby I was watching the um America America's Test Kitchen Ooh. and um their recipes and just the tips and techniques like for example if you want to make stir fry meat tender and get brown quickly is you sprinkle some baking soda on it and like your chopped up pieces and you mix it together and you let it sit there for like 30 minutes or however long. Sometimes I do it in the middle of the day if I'm gonna cook at night. And it makes it way tender and brown. And like, so it, it like gives you that flavor that you really want and the texture that you really want. But I learned that from the America's Text Kitchen Best kitchen YouTube video. That's awesome. Yeah. I never really like, thought about. You would appreciate this. This is a Landis Valley cookbook from Pennsylvania. And then I have a cookbook from, I don't have it with me, from um that from Chattanooga. There's like a Chattanooga cookbook. And then I have this one, which is like a Mennonite cookbook that just talks about cooking things seasonally. And I even have a vegan cookbook and it's super pretty. And then this one is South Carolina. And um, yeah, so I guess just all the places I've lived, places I've gone, roommates I've had, you know, you just learn things over over time. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So thanks for sharing your new, like what are your new techniques? I was actually gonna ask you that, like what is your, I think for me, and this isn't really a technique, it's more of an ease, so I love stir fry. Mm -hmm. but I don't want to sit and chop. So there's these bags of frozen stir fry vegetables. Oh yeah. That yeah. actually have noodles in it and it's super cheap. Mm -hmm. And you just throw it all in a stir, like in a wok with frozen yeah. mushrooms. Like everything's frozen. I don't even have to yeah. chop anything. Yeah. And then, you know, add some soy sauce and yeah, sweet chili sauce. We actually just bought um, Reed Drummond's barbecue sauce and had some. Ooh, was it good? It was so good. Okay. Like apple something or other. Dang, she's good. Yeah. Nice. You wanted to ask another? I would, yes. Yeah. So do okay. you make separate meals, because I know some people do, separate meals for your kids than from like you and your husband, and I, you're already no, I am not a short order cook. I love cooking, but my children are not like little princesses and a little prince. I mean, they're ours, but... Um, <laughs> No, they eat what, what I make and right. Like we started doing it, I think when they were two, like they would have to have at least two bites of everything on their plate. The, and, um, so then three and now four. So they had to have four bites of their salad, four bites of their rice, which we don't have to convince them that they love rice. Um, 
and black beans and we had pork chops tonight. We, I made this, uh, can I tell you what I made tonight for dinner? Yes, please. Because it doesn't have to be hard to make like homemade and healthy for your family. So we buy those like big um, pork tenderloin things. Mm, yes. And I will slice them up to be pork chops and freeze them. Like I slice and freeze. And then, so we have those pork chops and I season them with this, um, it's like a Puerto Rican seasoning that uh, we had friends that um, showed us this, and I don't even remember how to say it, but it comes in a green bottle. And so I season it with that, and then you just kind of sear it on either side. But I made, for the finish, I made this garlic lime cilantro mixture that was like potent and powerful so the pork chops were pretty much done cooking and then I just added that stuff to it and tossed it all together and it just added like this extra pop of flavor and it was really good and then I served it with just black beans from a can rice which is super easy to cook and then um I have a child that's really upset um, and then I made, I had cut up half a banana for Ben. So I was like, oh, I should use the rest of this banana. So I tossed the banana with blueberries and oranges, the little oranges, the halo oranges. Oh, yeah. I, Clementine. And then I was like, huh, that should just be like on the spinach. So I just, I put it on top of spinach and that was our salad time. Oh. So, um. I might have to pause this. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And that was part one of how to create healthy and easy meals for your family. It got cut off because Laura is a real mom. She has three kids and life happens, right? So sometimes kids will interrupt life. They'll wake up. They might not cooperate and that is totally fine. Uh, we look forward to part two, where we will dig a little bit deeper of asking Laura, does she always cook from scratch? And what are some of her shortcuts that she uses, as well as her go-to meals? And maybe some advice for not just moms, but regular, you know, working women on, all right, I don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of resources. What can I do to create and to start creating healthy and easy meals for myself and my family. So stay tuned for part two. And if you have any questions that you would like to ask as well, feel free to comment and we look forward to hearing from you.